today Waves released version 16 for the LV1 mixing console, both for the classic and for the modular system. If you want a quick overview, follow the link up here. It will take you to Waves official video. This will be a bit longer, a bit more in depth. So version 16 is a free upgrade for anyone with a LV1 license. However, there is a paid version if you need more inputs and more buses, and I will go through everything here. So let's see what you get if you upgrade to the version with more inputs and buses. Let's have a look. The upgrade comes with a separate license key so you can move it around if you want more channels on this console today and another console tomorrow. And you just go to the setup. So in the mixer configuration, you now have the option to have 80 input channels, either with 16 groups or 32 auxes. So in this case, let's go for uh, 32 auxes. And going back to the main window, you can now see that uh, it looks a bit different. So here you have all of your 80 inputs. And then here's a new tab, so you can switch to mix. Then you have all your groups, effects, and in this case, uh, 24 monitors. Then you have your masters and links here as well. So that is basically all you get with the paid option. And if you want to buy this, please use the link in the description. And now let's move on to the free stuff. One of the biggest drawbacks working with the LV1 has been the scenes. This is now fixed, or at least a lot better. Let's have a look. So at first glance, this looks quite familiar. However, this filter button makes all the difference. So if we go to channel one, we can see that channel one is the kick, obviously. Here we can decide what parameters we want to load in this scene for the kick. So say we want plugin one and two and the fader. And on channel two, the snare, we want just the uh, plugin three and uh, monitor sense. And on the bass, we want just the mute button and the effect send. That we just press OK and it's all stored. We can of course do it the old way as well. So say that we want the fader and plugin seven and eight for the groups. So we just select all the groups and turn this on. So now all of the groups have the global scoping and you can see that by this lighter blue color. This, of course, is night and day difference when setting up scenes for different songs, but it also helps out with scenes for utility stuff. So, for instance, I have this scene called Setup. This will turn on my pink noise generator and also turn up the talkback mic in all of the monitor sense. Moving on to the next one, this one is called Soundcheck, so this will turn up the backing vocal mic in the main artist in ears for easier communication and obviously turn off the pink noise generator. And you of course have the same filter option in the recall safe. So really easy and powerful. I would like to have fade times between the scenes but this is a big leap forward. Another big update is that you can import the aux send from another show. Let's have a look. So say you had a stand-in for the guitar player for a few shows. Now the regular player is back. You can then select the uh, guitar aux and import mix from session. Now you select the show from last week and you get this pop-up window. So this tells you where the imported mix will land. So in the guitar aux, we will import song number two from the guitar aux in the old session file. And let's hit import, and there we go. Now, this only works if you have not switched around in your channel. So the basic setup needs to be the same in both session files. Apart from this, there are a few minor but very welcome changes. Let's have a look. So now if you are in 
solo in place and hit solo, this will blink orange, indicating that solo in place is enabled. And if we switch to the normal Q mode, it is the uh, same thing as before. And for me personally, this perhaps is the biggest update because after sound check, I often use virtual playback and then I switch to solo in place in order to uh, hear certain things soloed in the PA. But if I then forget to switch back to Q mode, there will be a problem come showtime. Another big update is the aux latch mode. So previously, if you go into the artist mix and then go back to rack, you will leave the uh, aux flip mode. Now you can latch the aux mode. And if we flip to the artist send, we can now move around anywhere we want and the uh, flip monitor send will stay the same. Only thing is that there is no way of telling which aux that is flipped right now. So I need to go to the monitor sense in order to see what aux is, is flipped. So there is some improvement to be made. Since Waves has around 5 million plugins, it's now nice that you can search for plugins. And the plugin menu has been updated. When you update to version 16, the server has a firmware update, so this will be blue, and just press this once and update your server. And for the two sessions that I tested, the CPU usage was around 20% lower after updating to version 16. So yeah, those are the biggest updates. There are a few more small ones. In order to update to version 16, use the link below. And if you have any questions, let me know. 